It's live already. There goes the URL live ping. I didn't even have a chance to say hello to this fantastic group of people. But nevertheless, you're going to have a whole hour to hear from them. It's the last time you'll hear from me because my duties for the day are done. So thank you for humoring my moderation today. I have been Lauren from Calibri Games in Berlin. I hope I haven't annoyed you too much or broken any of the tech. So thank you for that. But your final panel of the day is now to begin. We are going to tackle yet another juicy topic. I promised you lots for this afternoon. Game on, strategies and trends in modern game industry marketing. So yeah, you've only got an hour, people, I'm afraid. I know you could probably go for longer, but you will be under the guidance of the lovely Thomas. So I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lauren, for the very warm welcome. And hello, everybody. Really a pleasure for me being here today at the conference and with this amazing panel. Uh, and we're going to talk about the strategies and trends in modern game industry marketing for this year and also looking further. My name is Thomas Krivanek. I'm originally the founder of AppRadar. Uh, AppRadar became a part of Splitmetrics last year. And at Splitmetrics, I'm managing our agency business where we're helping mobile games as well as mobile apps all around the globe when it comes to the topic of app growth and game growth. And today, as mentioned, I have a really great panel with me and I'm going to hand it over to Sebastian to start. Please introduce yourself. Uh, thanks, Thomas. Yeah, my name is Sebastian. Um, so what can I say about myself? So I'm working in digital media for 20 years, in gaming for 14 years, and for seven plus years, I'm a UA and marketing consultant, basically working with a very diverse set of uh, mobile gaming companies in the first place. So I'm a mobile first guy. And yeah, we're assisting uh, companies, if it's about UA, product marketing, ASO, business analytics, or internal management in all kinds of uh, ways, um, how they want to scale the games, how they want to make a turnaround in games. And yeah, hopefully I can contribute to the topic. And yeah, maybe then I'm just uh, handing it over and nominating David. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sebastian. Hi, everyone. I'm David Carrasco. I'm the CEO of Vermilla Studios. I've uh, been in the gaming industry for a little over 20 years, gaming, technology, and uh, been part of uh, the creation and publishing uh, of lots of very well-known games. And now we are working on our own uh, in Vermilla Studios. So really looking forward to working in this uh, fantastic panel with the rest of the guys and, and uh, sharing some of the cool trends that are coming in this year. And uh, I'll pass the word to Rafael. Hi, everyone. I'm Rafael Morgan. I'm the Vice President of uh, Partnerships and Marketing at Crazy Games. Excuse me, my voice. I got COVID a couple of weeks ago, and I'm still finding this stuff. It really it knocked me down for quite some time. So <clears throat> if you don't understand, let me know. Um, so I've been working on the game industry for more than 10 years, uh, mostly working on the web. So I'll bring the web perspective. It's different than mobile, but it's a marketing that's booming. Um, so. At Crazy Games, we're one of the leading web portals uh, with 30 million monthly active users. Uh, we have a very passionate community. We're working with different types of, of developers and publishers from indies uh, to students to big studios and big publishers. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I think I can contribute. Very happy to be here. Very nice, I think very high quality um, conversation. Um, and yeah, I pass the ball to Dima. Thank you, Raphael. Great to be here. My name is Dima. I'm the CEO and founder at a company called Jope.me. What we do is we help gaming companies to engage micro influencers at scale. And what sets us apart is that we are per performance based platform. So companies only pay for results, be it Steam wishlist, purchases, uh, or UGC content. We have over 2,000 influencers that we're working with and constantly growing. The platform has been live since uh, June last year, so we're fairly new to the market, but uh, we've seen an amazing growth in the industry coming both from the PC side and mobile as well. So um, I'd be happy to contribute to the panel and I'm very glad to be here. And I'm going to pass it on to Serge. You're on mute. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dima. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Serge Boyka. I'm a senior development manager for Zorka Agency. 
Zork Agency's uh, performance and influencer marketing agency. We increase LTV and dry metrics. Uh, we work in different verticals uh, from gaming into non-gaming. So um, very excited to be here with you, and I'm really, uh, I'm really proud of the uh, of uh, participating in this panel. So uh, it seems to me, I hope that we will have a great conversation and we will uh, share some insights uh, with our audience uh, how to um, create strategies and how to execute them. So thank you. Amazing, great. Thank you very much for the introduction, guys. And I would say, yeah, let's get into it. I mean, we are writing the year 2024. Uh, I would say the year started quite well, actually. Bitcoin is rising. We are nearly, you know, like not yet at the all time high, but, you know, nevertheless, it is rising. The SP 500 is at its ultimate peak, uh, like the beginning. Uh, so I would say the industry is in quite good shape. Also, when looking at the mobile uh, kind of revenue, we're also projecting for this year to hit kind of the all time high that was during COVID times. So I would say it feels quite well. What, what's your take on that? Rafael, what do you think? Do you are you looking forward into this new year? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> I mean we're we're coming from some like, tough years, right? We talk to a lot of studios. Neo platform, we have this perspective that um, we talk to everybody. We talk to game engines. We talk to to developers, to publishers, um, and uh, and we can really see that has been um, some tough years. So so it's really nice to to hear this news. I've, I've seen a lot of studios trying to innovate, to diversify, to try something different as well, right? Um, but I mean, I think the most important thing game has always been a necessity of people before the COVID. So it's uh, and after. So it's nice that we you know we're catching it up. I think. Um, there are some crazy projections from 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 a lot of companies happening during COVID, uh, but uh, but now I think we're stabilizing and getting and getting back right. We we at uh, being part of the web, we actually noticed uh, during this time a huge trend of mobile developers and publishers looking for alternatives and new platforms, right, and seeking seeking ad additional revenue stream, right. So I guess a lot of people have their the eyes on the money, um, and for us it has been a really a great couple of years, and this year is also starting very strong, right, right. There, I think there's talking about from the perspective from the web uh, markets. There's a lot of opportunities coming. There's larger players, um, you know, people that have been talking for years, right? Like they are actually joining the market. So it's very, very exciting, right? And I think one thing that we know is, um, you know, there is a consumer change as well, right? Like which always has been, you know, it's part of evolution. We change as people, right? And we, we start seeing like new consumers joining and becoming independent consumers, right? Um, and I think that's also one perspective that I see and I want to bring that, you know, that a lot of we need to change and adapt and understand what this what this guys wants. Right. Um, and uh, and at Crazy Games, we see, um, you know, this new generation coming um, and we are welcoming and trying to become part of, of their culture. Right. The pop culture. Um, and I think we're doing this pretty OK with 30 million monthly active users. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's the perspective of, of the market. Right. Um, and from from the you know the blockchain perspective, I think uh, it's not really some stuff that we touch very often, but we're talking to more and more studios. Um, from what I've seen, I mean, in the past there's so much money flowing. You just have to have the word crypto on your project, and uh, and you will get some money. A lot of them didn't make it, but I think what what I'm very hopeful, um, and I and I can see in the past one year, I started seeing some really really cool projects coming. Um, a lot of them are adapting to the web point too as well, right? They're trying to understand how how we gonna how we can work together. Um, we're about to launch a really cool game that's called My, My Action Hero, very polished, um, and you know initially made for Web three, and they're adapting to Web two. And I think that a lot of them are also understanding what it needs to to happen. Uh, my personal take is that you know Web3 is like bottom of the funnel. First, you need to have a great game. First, you need to sell in our purchase. First, the people need to engage and everything. And if they like it, if everything is going well, then they can buy your you know your NFT. They can buy whatever it happens inside. So we we at Crazy Games we welcome this type of games um, as well. So this is my take. I'm very hopeful. I'm very very very. I think that the start of the game has been uh, the year has been really spot on. Nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, already touching on very big trends here, I would say web as well as with Web3. I mean, kind of, uh, let's see yeah, where this is going, but it sounds very promising already from what you are saying. 
Uh, Dima, do you have something to add? What do you see as the trends for the gaming industry in 2024? Yeah. First of all, I would like to agree to disagree in terms of all the optimism that you guys are depicting. I'm, I'm there with you. I, I, I'm very optimistic, but I would rather say that this year and perhaps the year 2024, uh, in my opinion, it's going to be a year about uncertainty because there's just like too many things going on. And people that I've been in touch from the industry, a lot of them are kind of a bit lost. They don't know what to expect from the year, although like there is optimism, but there's still a lot of things that, you know, can affect the business, including AI and also including like the, the macro factors that has, I think, has affected the market in 2023 by a lot. So uh, we can take out of the accounts and it's kind of like obvious with all those uh, playoffs that has that has been taking place and still are taking place, unfortunately, in the industry. So there's a lot of like these fundamental shifts that are taking place. So that said, I think some of those like 2023 uncertainty trends are gonna move over to 2024. But um, with that, obviously, there's like some some unique things. So from, for, for example, in terms of the market situation, like I think last year has been like one of the most competitive years uh, in terms of the number of games that have been published in one year. And uh, for 2024, I hope and I think this trend is going to go is going to go down and we're going to coming back to normal uh, and the publishers most likely are going to be still de-risking um, de with the number of games that they're investing in. And sort of like instead of putting like huge budgets into like AAA um, games, I think they're going to be going after like diversifying and putting less money, but into more studios. And this trend is going to be fueled by the successes of like, Lethal Company and, and Pell World. Like these were massive successes and games built by really tiny teams. So I think this is this trend is going to continue. So still more games, uh, more, more like smaller studios, nimble studios and publishers diversifying uh, their assets. Also, the UGC trend, I think this is what we have been seeing in 2023 with the launch of UEFN uh, on Fortnite. I think this is just starting to pick up, uh, although UEFN is still kind of lagging behind the Roblox, which have has been on the market for a while now, but um, I will. I assume there's going to be a lot of like brand budgets flowing into UEFN as well, like it was flowing in, in into Roblox uh, engagements. Like we've all seen the Chipotle and, and Walmart and all those like fashion brands um, launching their unique experiences within within the Roblox community. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't want to spend a lot of time. We can spend like the whole hour or even a day <laughs> discussing discussing this. I just want to say that there's also like AR and VR. There's the uh, Apple Pro Vision Pro, obviously, uh, but it's just like taking uh, take making its first step. So I don't think it's going to be like a trend for 2024, but it's some something definitely to to look into. And I think this is this has the potential to be huge, like ER VR and everything that is Meta doing with their like Quest 3 device. Um, and with all of that, influencer marketing is also going to be playing a, a bigger, even a bigger role when promoting games, um, because this is one of the most effective channels to showcase the game and to organically uh, get, get the viewership, but also um, it's becoming like one of the unique channels to reach the Gen Z audience because mm. Twitch and YouTube, these are the main channels where they, or TikTok, obviously, where they spend most of their time. So influencer marketing is going to be big in terms of marketing. Totally, totally. Yeah, uh, really, you touched really a lot of uh, trends, I would say, for this year. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm totally at your side. Yeah, there is a lot of going to happen. Siach, do you have to add something from your uh, from your side as well, or do you think we touched all the trends that we are going to see in this year? Uh, I think that uh, briefly we can uh, mention uh, that one of the trends uh, for uh, 2024 will be the cloud gaming. I think that uh, with the advancement of cloud technology and uh, 5G in infrastructure, cloud gaming services are expected to become 
uh, more widespread. Um, mm, what what can we add else? Um, for example, uh, Dima already uh, mentioned the Apple Vision Pro and the augmented reality, mixed reality, yeah, and uh, first videos that I have already watched, uh, they're really impressive. Uh, some uh, already have uh, demonstrated how mobile uh, games wipe out work on Vision Pro. Uh, as an example, PUBG Mobile already was played on, on, on uh, Apple Vision Pro. Uh, the most amazing thing, I think, that uh, to play for uh, to play in this game, you even uh, you can play even without a con uh, external controller. <laughs> like still, um, like solely uh, relying on gaze and gestures. Of course, of, uh, the speed of movements and the accuracies uh, in this case are not the highest, but the fact itself, it's really impressive. And I think that uh, most gamers are thrilled uh, with the result of this uh, experience with Apple Vision Pro. And I think that um, for now in 2024, we like, uh, on the uh, we are on the blink of a revolution. I think that, and I in the, in, in the, I can imagine that we will uh, see in this year really amazing titles. Totally, totally. I'm also already looking forward to that a lot, yeah. Because especially the mixed reality, how you mentioned it, I think here we're going to see a lot of opening up and new uh, possibilities. Uh, I think we are very close to ready player one kind of already so with with, uh, with all the the recent uh, development um yeah i mean david from your side what do you think what are kind of do we still have some trends or did we touch now everything that could happen or will happen in 2024 no i i believe there's there's been a a lot of uh great trends mentioned i i, I believe for both uh search and dima uh Touch the, the the topics of the um, acceleration of the AR VR industry with uh, Apple Vision Pro. I, I think the industry was already moving towards that. Not only, of course, a hundred percent, but it was uh, kind of uh, creating that that uh, side of of the gaming uh, world. But this this new player, I think, will will accelerate that a little more. Will capillarize the technology uh, to more and more. Uh, players uh, worldwide also uh, another another um, trend that I, I think Dima uh, mentioned was the fact that uh, we were starting to see a more and more um, divisive or, or separated um, uh, budgets for for games we we start to see more and more smaller games being made and at the same time more and more large games being made with a big gap in the center uh that way i, I think they are starting to to play the uh let, let's add more eggs to the basket um if if we have uh, uh one million two million euros or uh 10 million euros uh, we are gonna invest that in 20 games instead of three and that way we have more chances not only for a success but also for a big big success like uh, uh we've seen with with certain games like pal world or uh valheim that that kind of uh where um unforeseen uh successes there and and with that uh some other um trends that that we've noticed is the um push in, in the unreal engine side with um, better tools, better uh, reach to the to the developers, and uh, also the UEFN side, uh, trying to to get Unreal Engine in the hands of more and more people. So when they will start thinking about going to a more serious uh, game, they already know how to use Unreal Engine, and they they are more comfortable. So we we've seen that kind of big step forward for from from epic games and and uh, for sure i i will also agree that the cloud uh gaming uh cloud technologies are are super super powerful so in the pc and console side uh, they they can provide uh right now they are providing uh libraries and and other possibilities we we are seeing in in uh 
certain consoles or, or certain uh, PCs that are very, very powerless, uh, the possibility of playing with really high-end games, uh, fantastic graphics and all that, that are being calculated in the cloud, like in Azure, for example. And, and those are uh, just delivering the graphics and the experience to the user. And uh, thanks to a, a much better broadband connection and a much, much more powerful uh, cloud side with AI uh, to do, for example, upscaling for the graphics and so many other things. I think that uh, uh, it's, it's a major trend. And of course, finally, AI that I briefly mentioned that will be very per pervasive, not only in the game consuming side uh, with these technologies that upscale or improve your your experience. Uh, it, it could even get to the bad side uh, with uh, cheating and, and things like that. But also we, we have we've seen how it has started to capillarize into the development side with uh, uh, GitHub uh, Copilot, where you are uh, trying to find a way to do something uh, in a game and then it provides you with uh, examples and recommendations and ideas or how to fix your code or how to improve the uh, the, the power or, or the uh, the performance of what you're making. So we, we see more and more of uh, artificial intelligence going in the technology side and the consumption of such technology as well. Amazing. Yes, totally true. Yeah, uh, really a lot of uh, technology shifts that we're seeing. I would even frame it. Yeah. Uh, however, one thing I think that we can all agree on is yeah, in 2024, we're also going to see more games or hopefully a little bit less. Uh, um, let's see. Yeah, depending on. But nevertheless, there will be a lot of games. I think this uh, is something that we can agree on. They will be spread over multiple platforms, over multiple systems. Might it be mobile? Might it be web? Might it be Web3? Might it be the Apple Vision Pro? And so on and so forth. So, however, one topic that will still be the same, or let's say stay the same challenge, is where do we find users? Where do we find players that are actually playing those games? Uh, with that in mind, also thinking a little bit about what are the trends when we think about the topic of user acquisition that might change the gaming industry as well in this year. Sebastian, do you have some thoughts on this topic? I definitely have some thoughts about it. <clears throat> um, so, um, I mean, looking more from the mobile perspective, as I shared earlier on, um, everyone knows that uh, there are some, some major trends they were mentioned in uh, earlier, so macroeconomic things, but also data privacy is definitely a determining factor, which is making our lives harder. Um, so where also companies are struggling, we have to say, so it's not only about higher CPIs as always, it's also what channels can we still use, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we don't have a one source of truth anymore. Um, so a lot of challenges for the teams. So with that in mind, there are, let's say, some tactics or strategies that I see in the market uh, that, that, that are relevant. So, so there are some companies not only looking for UA, but also for retargeting, for example. So they, they uh, review their portfolio. Maybe there are some legacy games where they can contact the DSP or they, they look into some very classic retargeting uh, activities. So, because it could be easier for them to, to market an older legacy game instead of launching a new game where there's high level of uncertainty with all that difficult context, let's say. So there might be different marketing objectives, uh, let's say, um, where, where there's quite some interest in, in, in doing, uh, re reviving these activities. Uh, in that context, I also observed, uh, for example, uh, different concepts. So like uh, mini games is one thing that I, uh, here quite often. Um, I mean, it's actually not super new. Playrix is doing it for a lot of time, was trend setting on it. But I see also like the more 4X strategy games that are really into that, um, looking um, how to how to market these games in a more easier way, because especially older uh, um, games that are monetizing slowly are in, in ch uh, challenged in a post IDFA world. So they need to, to attract users in a different and faster way. Mini games could be an activity uh, that helps them. Um, what else I'm seeing is like hybrid UA. Um, so basically for, for games that are monetizing in a hybrid way, so IAP based or ad monetization based. Um, so I think that's it's a smart way to diversify here. 
um, because um, yeah, you have def different partners, different optimization types, and you can um, blend all the, the 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 revenues that you're creating in one campaign, which gives you just simply options. Also, knowing that fingerprinting probabilistic modeling might disappear, maybe not in 2024, but at some point. And I think uh, what, what the others uh, were mentioning already, so there are also, uh, there's need for, let's say, alternative UA. So if it's influencer marketing, um, where there's anyway not the possibility and not the need to track everything down. So uh, companies try to be more smarter on that end. But also when it comes to porting the games to different platforms, because then you can also unlock new channels for, for UA activities. Yeah, I think that's that's it. Totally. Really great points that you were bringing up here, Sebastian. And uh, yeah, I think to summarize, yeah, um, if the industry as such is changing, obviously also topics like user acquisition, like uh, also retargeting and so on, they kind of also have to pull along the way to kind of uh, keep up with, uh, with the trends that are going on. Raphael, do you have to add something on this? What's your point? On yeah, that? I mean, look, I, I think it's, um, you know, you have to kind of be where the attention is, right? And I think some companies are doing really well at just thinking out of the box and doing some cross promotion, partner up with other brands and exchanging community, right? I mean, obviously, I think the mobile industry is it's very, uh, how can I say, that data oriented, right? You optimize and 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 do user acquisition and just by buying the users. But there is a, there's other ways of doing freely, right? Which uh, I, I think the, on the web again, we we must really be in advance these things, right? So cross promotion is one that I mean, we, as you see, there is Copley doing stumble guys just partnering up with all the cool brands that are there, you know. And then there, if you found that brand, and then you hear about the game, so you become a user as well. Um, I think it's like for us, um, we we do a lot of SEO, and I think that some a trend, you know, uh, has become harder and harder to launch a new game, work in your brand, uh, make sure that you know you find you're very foundable and easy, um, you know, for people to connect with you. I mean, we we master this, right? So our, most places around the world, if you type the word games, the first thing you see is crazy games. So you can imagine the volume of, of, of an impact of these things in terms of user acquisition as well, right? I mean, I think the other the, the thing that the other mentioned as well, like being available, uh, you know, partner up with, with influencers, social media. Um, and I also saw a lot of uh, trends going around playable ads, right? And then again, just kind of like reinforcing a playable ad is it's kind of like, you know, it, it's a game that you can play very easily and on the web you can do this as well you just play press one link share one link and you're able to do so uh, so it's a very strong user acquisition as well for games that they go cross platform um so yeah that's my take perfect great thank you very much for sharing your your thoughts here as well yeah I mean, also one topic, I think we were talking very much now, uh, let's say strategic. Uh, I mean, first of all, we were talking about trends, now very much about the uh, kind of different strategies, what we can do to get uh, to users. Going a little one level deeper, I would say, really on the hands-on work of doing actually user acquisition, of setting up campaigns, of coming up with a description, for example, of coming up with ideas for different uh, promotions that we can run. I think generative AI, uh, especially since obviously last year, yeah, uh, is here a very big partner. Uh, I just only can tell from our side that Split Metrics, we integrated it very much into, I would say, nearly all of our client facing processes that we're doing when we're really coming up with promotional content, when we're coming up with ideas for concepts, for marketing concepts, so on and so forth. We are still at the stage that it's, you know, like not, let's say, just go ahead and it will be 100% perfect. I think we're still at the stage of uh, it can help a lot uh, speed up the process. It can help with ideation, but it still needs some kind of approval at the end of the day and some corrections. Let's put it like that to get it to the really 100% uh, status and output. Um, Sebastian, I know you're also very much uh, focusing on this topic as well. What's your take on that? What are your learnings, your findings around generative AI and user <coughs> acquisition and marketing? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you gave a very um, um, useful introduction already. So it's evolving, it's disruptive, uh, I think. Um, I mean, today um, there was this announcement about the video production about Sor from Sora side. So you can create with prompts, with text, the video. So this is just underlying how fast it's developing. So, and to be honest, it's very difficult 
today to comprehend where it's ending. So, so yeah, it's it's hard to predict. Um, I mean, uh, on the UA side, it's very much as you described it. If it's text copy, if it's localization, if it's about uh, creating static assets, etc. I think this is used almost in every team right now. So people are experimenting. Um, it's also changing the role of UA managers, we have to say, because five years back, it was very uh, complicated uh, or time consuming to create a, a Facebook campaign with lookalike audience. You could try to hack the system. Today, you have a AAA campaign and you are not so involved in this anymore. So you're, you're uh, shifting the focus. but. I also agree that right now we are not in a stage where the things are like fully automated and, and things are working um, uh, totally independent, let's say, and you can let a brand marketer just do the job. So there's still quite some open questions. So for example, IP rights, I've, I'm not sure how the policymakers will still um, intervene here and, and set some, some higher uh, bars or thresholds on how to work with uh, uh, generative AI. Um, I think there are still questions about the art style. So right now, if, if I'm having a brand or an IP, so I cannot really work um, uh, with Midjourney because I cannot, uh, in this moment, uh, professionally duplicate the, the art style. I think this is solvable, but it's not yet there. Um, but on, on the other side, I mean, going to conferences, there are also a lot of developers that are embedding in generative AI in their content production, and not only about, you know, prompting a text, everyone can do that, but uh, really about how to produce content for your game. So how is uh, level content produced on, on the game side? Um, how can we maybe the, the game itself uh, generated based on mid journey uh, so that you also have later on the right marketing assets so that this mismatch about uh, the art styles is not a problem, for example. So they're really looking Com uh, companies are already really looking into that and they are already existing. They are already doing this. So I think it's it's quite disruptive. Maybe just the final sentence. Some people consider this as a video games industry. And when uh, Sora, this new tool comes up and you can produce 30 to 60 second videos just with an easy prompt later on, um, this is disruptive. And I cannot imagine what that means in this moment. Yes, uh, that is a really great point. Uh, I think AI-powered video production, I mean, that uh, for sure will be a very, very big topic that we will be seeing. I'm not sure if already this year, you know, like if we will be really there or maybe next year, but it will be coming. That is 100% for sure. One thing that I'm also asking myself the question, and I think we're also seeing it more often, is the around influencer marketing. We are also already seeing kind of AI powered influencers. I mean, on Instagram, there are already actually a lot of uh, girls already, AI created girls that are gaining a lot of traction, a lot of followers. Uh, what do you think, Dima? When will we be seeing the first user generated AI uh, creatives? Or do we already have them? <laughs> yeah, as you mentioned, they're, they already exist and some of them are like really successful, like having hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and creating this unique content every day. Uh, that's something like unique. That's something that just uh, appeared and I think it's going to be developing and growing. But again, like understanding that it's an artificially created persona, I don't know how many people are actually going to be like truly relating to that. I mean, it's fun to watch. It's, an, it's a new trend. Uh, I don't know if that's going to stick or not. I'm I'm still uncertain about that. I, I hope it doesn't because in my opinion, like influencer marketing, like the, 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 the advantage of it is that you can actually build like true deep relationship between the, the creator and the community. And this is something like that, that a lot of like gaming companies, they 90% of them have tried influencer marketing in, in certain capacity. And most of the time, um, before, like they were focusing on like large influencers with huge audience, like a million followers. And a lot of these campaigns didn't end well because you get the impression side of it, but the conversions, like the usually like, like these, these campaigns don't always transform into like, boost of sales or the KPIs that uh, the brands were willing to, to, to get. So what we currently see is that 
the trend is uh, towards working with micro-influencers or small influencers, those who actually have that trust with their community. And uh, needless to say, whenever these like smaller guys are recommending a game or playing a game, the conversion rates um, to going and, and buying the game or testing it out are, are much higher. Like it could be like 10 to 15 times higher than what you would get from, from the large influencers. But the issue with that is that you need so, so, so many like micro influencers to actually have like decent results. Those would, that, that would drive your sales and would, would move the needle for you. And this is like the complicated part. Like where do you get those like hundreds or thousands of micro influencers that would start promoting your game that would be very honest and engaged in the promotion. And, uh, this is like one of the problems that we discovered while uh, running drove.me. And this is exactly the issue that we are solving for the market. So we're like in the process of automating the engagement between the gaming companies and micro influencers. Um, and our goal is to completely automate that process. So just with, with three clicks of a button, you can actually run a campaign with hundreds of influencers and again, only pay for the results that you're getting, be it Steam wish list or purchases, or even like UGC content, which is uh, highly demanded by mobile gaming companies, for example. This has been the trend recently as well. Um, and just to give the perspective of how important influencer marketing is, there's like 50 million creator or influencers that are doing it as a full-time job. And if you ask um, any Gen Z, like what do they, aspire to become when they grow up, you'd get like 70% of them would say, ah, I want to be a creator. I want to create my content. I want to have followers. So this is the trend that's only going to grow uh, from, from where we are now. Um, and even on Twitch, we had, there's like over 9 million creators with an audience of hundreds of millions of game players. So this is like the exact audience that gaming companies want to tap into. And there's a huge opportunity there. Uh, yeah. Sounds very interesting and also very inspiring numbers that you were just telling. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm totally on your side. Yeah. If you mm -hmm. ask the, the kids nowadays, what do they want to become? A uh, YouTuber is somewhere top on the list. <laughs> so this uh, is really kind of a big trend that we're seeing. David, from your point of view, what about influencer marketing and your kind of, I mean, you're also a creator, obviously, because you're creating games, but kind of how are you also connected with the topic of influencer marketing? Well, uh, one, one really interesting way that they have been pushing the, the boundaries, I would say, is with Discord. Uh, Discord is, is a fantastic way to increase not only the reach for the videos and for the times where they are uh, online and, and uh, just live uh, playing your game, or but also having that Discord um, server that you may have, but also the Discord servers that these influencers marketing, these, uh, sorry, marketing influencers may have, uh, and you kind of playing there, talking to the people that have been uh, watching your games live or just just by uh, being there and connecting with the audience beyond the moments of the videos uh, and, and the live live uh, performances that's that's uh, really amazing and it definitely shows that your reach uh, of before and after influencer marketing uh, is is very very different you you were kind of in the hands of the magazines and the tv ads and the uh even online banners and that was so much more um laid back you didn't need to worry about it you didn't need to participate you didn't need to uh be there actively right so the the change in the trend where you passively produce marketing content and then you expect it to work and now you kind of generate uh relationships and then work those relationships day after day, sometimes through an agency, sometimes directly, sometimes uh, a, a combination of both, and, and doing uh, specific events, uh, bringing specific people in different different countries, different uh, territories, different moments. It, it's such a day and night 
of of the marketing world in the gaming industry and it's changed so much in the last i, I will say five to eight years uh like maybe 10 years ago you will notice some influencer marketing but the ramp up has been completely astounding in in the past seven to five years uh like uh, uh day day and night as i as i was saying that's totally true yeah uh, uh, that is uh, really one of the, let's say the fastest growing kind of uh, marketing channels i would even say yeah i mean Serge, you're also working uh, very closely together with influencers uh maybe you also have something to add here and one question that i also have uh, in regards to that uh, because uh I can remember back yeah, in the beginning when it was kind of popping up as a topic. Yeah, I also did some tests uh, trying to get in contact with influencers. But let's face the truth, not every influencer is also a professional businessman. In the same time, uh, it can be very frustrating for some of them to really set up, get really commitment on binding kind of promotions at a specific time, at a specific date. At least that was my experience from back then. Siach, maybe you have something to add. Maybe nowadays everything is better, easier. Yeah, I want to add uh, very briefly uh, because we should save our time um, to only 20 minutes left. So I want to say that um, influencer marketing answering the question, um, influencer marketing continues to strengthen its impact. Uh, and uh, right now, um, um, till um, during the 2023, the, the global influencer marketing industry uh, is uh, about $22 billion. So it's quite a really impressive budget, really impressive market. So, uh, but uh, forecasts were like, uh, it will be only 15 till the end of the 2024. Uh, so we are, <laughs> we are uh, really, uh, mm, um we um we see that uh influence marketing uh grows really um fast um in terms of uh, um, answering your question regarding the uh, um difficult uh difficulties in reaching out to the influencers yeah uh it's uh we have this problem uh and uh, uh it's uh better uh, to if you want to uh mm, launch really efficient campaign and you don't want to mm, spend really much time for this you can um just try to mm, ask for an agency to cover all these points because uh because uh, in this field uh, and as dima men mentioned that uh with micro influencers it's uh, um, too hard to um, um reach a really uh good and efficient result and you should uh, include hundreds of influencers in your marketing campaign and you should pay them for all the integrations uh, it's really uh great and big um Mm, amount of work so that's why we should uh, we um, um, propose our partners uh not to put all the eggs into one basket yeah and we and uh, when um advertisers uh, understand that uh, they want to launch influencer marketing campaigns they want to um, they should diversify not only platforms but uh size of influencers too so you can mix micro influencers with with macro influencers and then uh in, in this way you will achieve uh much more uh much better results so um, um if we if we can use summarize on in this point i think that um, influence marketing became uh data really data driven and uh, authentic so and uh, and advertisers should understand understand that uh this uh, instrument is not for every is not for every product so that's why it's important to understand uh is it suit for you or not Brilliant. that's why we can help in this yeah 
Really great point. Yeah, really great points that you were just mentioning. Yeah. Uh, and also here, just uh, thinking a little bit also outside uh, again of uh, also looking at other kind of marketing channels that we have. Um, I would say one thing that we will still be seeing also this year will be running ads on various platforms. Um, what What's your take on that, Sebastian, since you're also very much uh, focusing on the topic of user acquisition? What will be the biggest ad network or the biggest ad networks in 2024? Uh, you're muted, Sebastian. Thanks. <clears throat> um, so when we look at, for example, the Apps Flyer um, uh, net, uh, index for for the ad networks, they are the usual suspects, and they are there for a good reason. So I would say um, five years ago, eighty percent of the ad spend was normally placed on Facebook, and then a little bit on Google, and maybe some some other networks. This changed a lot. So I think Facebook could be 15, 20% for quite a lot of companies these days on mobile. Um, so it's definitely decreasing. You can still make your business with it and can still run and it's great. But if you're dependent on it, it's making lots of sense to diversify and to look into Google. I have a lot of trust in Google. It's a very good product. It was not a good product five years ago, I believe. Um, today, I, I really much trust it, so it's a, it's a great partner. Um, and then, I mean, Adlovin has a huge potential. So, for, for of course, not for every product it can work, um, but it has massive volumes. You can really scale up massively. So, of course, um, there might be differences. For example, on iOS, I would decide more for Adlovin because they still have op uh, options for for probabilistic modeling, while then. Google, there might be more beta programs where you need to participate. And most of the companies have been struggling the last two years, for example, with Facebook and iOS due to data privacy. Uh, this, this can change and it is changing. I heard it's getting better, but um, yeah, I think um, a lot of companies are diversifying in this direction, let's say. Very interesting and great points again. Yeah. Um, looking a little bit, uh, let's say, outside of mobile, uh, looking once again more into web or also, I would say, like Steam publishing, for example. David, what's your take on that? I mean, you already mentioned Discord, which I think is a very interesting channel as well. Let's face the truth, it also needs some time to build it up. Community building in its best, yeah? Uh, I think that's a great way. But aside of that, what do you think might be other very interesting channels to have a look at? Well, that's, uh, you know, it, the audiences for mobile and web web games, plus the audiences for console and PC games uh, interlace sometimes, but not always. They, there's a lot of people that may do a slight, like small gaming on, on mobile, but then they do like 95 to 98 percent of their gaming on a high-end pc or latest co generation console so and vice versa we we've seen also a trend where more and more let's let's call them official gamers is a side of casual gamers the, the more hardcore are playing like 50 60 80 percent of their time or more on mobile uh, with like high-end high-quality very very uh, well developed games on mobile and then they may play on some like newer and and super cool games or maybe some uh uh community playing on on the pc and console so you need to be very aware of that when when you kind of uh plan for your release and your pre-release so uh some of the areas where you have to 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 tack on is uh First, if you are only going mobile or if, you, if there's a big percentage of mobile, uh, think about the mobile advertisement platforms and, and uh, specialized agencies. They, they can take you to the right audience more easily and uh, with uh, a better pricing usually than going towards uh, just a, a more generic uh, advertisement platform. And, uh, Likewise, if you are going to the PC and console market, uh, think about first, 
And this is uh, sometimes uh, one thing that we may forget. There's the first parties there. There's Microsoft, there's Sony, there's Nintendo, and they have their own events. They have their own uh, like push uh, for uh, advertisement for bigger games or even smaller but interesting games. And they are always looking for interesting content uh, to showcase in their in the uh, showcase of of uh, 2023 summer or uh, you know uh, the Nindies uh, event in in. Uh, Christmas, there's always moments there uh, where they are looking for the right content to push. And we should not be afraid of reaching out to those those first, first parties and, and uh, trying to help them understand our product and uh, let them help us reach that audience that are like just waiting for those, those uh, showcases that last 30 minutes to an hour. And they are just like game after game after game. And uh, it can take you to, to a, a big front end of, of uh, potential players. So those, those are, I, I think, big, big uh, uh, trends or, or big uh, elements that, that you always have to keep in mind. Yes. R really great point here. And I, I'm totally also a fan of building up the relationship also with kind of the marketplace where you're publishing your games, especially if they're kind of supporting indie game development, for example, as well with different contests. This is, I think, a really great place uh, what you can look at uh, where you can also build up some initial traction around it. And I think kind of the end goal kind of is to really build a community around people that like to play your games. I mean, Rafael, looking into your direction, you guys are... I don't know how many hundreds, thousands, 10,000 games you have on your platform. I'm sure you will be also having a hardcore fan base that is kind of really looking forward to when new games are being published. Maybe you can share a little bit of insights here and also building up such a community. Yeah, I think like the way I look personally, right, um, is that we are like tribal animals, right? Like we, it, it's, it's instinct, right? So uh, so we care a lot about the social aspect, the people that are next to us, where are they playing? Um, I look where, where, you know, I play video game with my kids, right? I have two boys. Um, and so the word of mouth is there, right? Hey, come and check check it out what I'm playing. And then we start playing, right? So so there is, I think there's, there's so much importance in terms of building a strong community into the aspect of building the social aspect, right? Obviously you can make friends online, right but but i mean it's even if you make it online eventually you're gonna meet in person being a video game event or a fair or whatever right so so the social aspects is fundamental for that and that's what we try to to offer to to all the games that we have right obviously it's very challenged with a, with, a, with a large catalog but i think it's also another thing that i noticed for me myself as well recently is like being you know, like a mood platform right so i play fortnite on my mobile i play fortnite on my nintendo switch right um and and I think that's that's kind of like you know being everywhere enables me to connect with the people that are next to me that I want to be uh, more. And I think you know we're seeing this like you know not talking about the web, talking about like the whole industry as a whole. A lot of people try to do this. A lot of companies try to do this recently, right? I think the the biggest example, just referencing again, it's Stumble Guys now going to the Xbox, right? They're trying to tap other community. They're trying to unite the gamers. They're trying to be available everywhere. And I think that's that's a that's an element you know that you know these days the game engines enable you to do this stuff you can make it much easier than it was like 10 15 years ago where building for a new platform was a completely different challenge right and i think that's uh, that that that's a very crucial important aspect from building a community the social aspect and the availability you need it to be everywhere right um and besides that i mean there's a plenty of tools you guys mentioned so i i won't dive deep because i don't have a lot of time but discord it's really cool right we're seeing we're seeing like new kids join there the first time they don't know you know how even how to use the stuff but they connect with people they they hang around they make friends uh and i think that this, this is kind of where we're going right technology is beautiful um yeah very fun of it amazing yeah really cool yeah and i'm totally at your side that uh, discord is something you know, like where people come together where like-minded people come together that they start discussions about uh, games that they love to play about kind of finding you know, like some some ways how to improve the skills maybe or to solve some very tricky levers as well so it's really something i think where people can come together when also thinking about this yeah when we're talking about people coming together plays coming together talking about our game this is obviously also something that we can use also to extract feedback 
but maybe aside of also having a very close look at our discord channel to kind of see you know like what is driving the trends what is driving the players there what might be other ideas or is it that kind of where could we get the feedback from the players dima what's your take on that yeah i mean i totally agree that the best feedback that you can get is from the players that are playing your game and that's and specifically like the core players, the ones that have been supporting you like from, from day one. And basically we're coming back to, to the initial topic, the community. So the best feedback is, is the feedback that you can get from your community. So I'm not going to say a lot about that. We've already touched base on that, but what we've uh, also noticed from kind of like an interesting source of getting feedback, especially like when you're starting to build a game is actually by having streamers like stream your like demo, for example, because streamers are playing multiple games. Like some, some of the streamers that we work with, like they stream 300 games in the last year. So they like super variety streamers. They know all the genres uh, and they're like really good at uh, understanding the games and playing the games. And we've seen that um, some of the gaming companies launch campaigns, they were watching a couple of streams uh, streamers playing their game and they got like tons of feedback because streamers are just very articulate and expressive and they can deliver the messages like what is wrong with the game or well, what is amazing about the game where you should like you know highlight and, and work on that a bit more to make it even better so i guess this could be considered as a very good source of feedback especially when your game is still not live but when it's when you're kind of like working on your uh on your pre-launch so yeah this 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 is like one one of the new channels that i think uh gaming companies should be tapping into amazing amazing um yeah guys looking at the time uh, we're kind of i would say getting to the end however i would uh, like to touch one final topic now to really kind of close because i think we have been talking about trends we have been talking about user acquisition we have been talking about building communities influencer marketing kind of engaging with our players However, there is one topic that we didn't touch yet, and that is the topic money. What do you guys think? Let's make a very quick round uh, through the round here. Yeah, I mean, t technically speaking, you know, like I would say, historically speaking, better said, uh, you know, the times where you were paying a specific amount uh, of money and you got the game for it and that's it. I think, uh, you know, it's a little bit over for most of the cases, I would say, yeah. So what's your take on that, guys? What do you think will be on the monetization side? Will there some new trends are going to happen? Maybe also thinking of multi-platform publishing and so on and so forth. Or will we, will we be staying by in-app purchases and ad revenues? Who wants to go first? Um, uh, go for it, Rafael. Yeah, I'm just saying because there is there is something happening right now that I've, you know that I've seen, um, and I think this will touch the two points at the same time here. So during the last few nights, the Unity announced that they are officially supporting like mobile web, right? Um, and and I, and I think this will be a huge change, right? Like, but if you think about it, everything moved to the web, right? Microsoft Office, TV streaming, video call, Figma, everything is this kind of like it's a nature thing. Obviously, video games it's bigger, it's more complicated as well. But I mean, in the ideal world, right? You will play, play Fortnite by clicking on a link, and this it may might take another twenty years. Who knows? But eventually, this will happen. The power, the the, the browser is getting more powerful. We have web GPU, a lot's happening, and this unlocks a lot of things right because the moment that you can do this you can build your own web store you can sell directly to the consumers um and we're already seeing a bunch of publishers trying to do this uh, at the moment this is this is something that's ongoing right um when you control the whole monetization channel you circumvent the app stores you, you take this 30 percent fee and i think this is this is the trend this is and this is happening this year it's happening as we speak to be honest so this is my take great david do you have to add something on top? Yes, sorry, I, I didn't unmute. I don't know why. Uh, I, I wanted to add to that that the one one trend that we've noticed in in the Asian market, especially, and I think that's that's because they are less less scared of it, is the blockchain technology, and how it can help you connect. Uh, contents from certain games to other games. Uh, one company was was selling things like, hey, if you 
create uh, one character here and that character gets a sword in this game, they could have the same sword in that other game. And then you could have the same character uh, being a soccer player here and a barbarian there. And uh, you could uh, transfer your uh, sword to another player and keep track of all that. And and that could be a big, big chunk of the monetization and, and overseeing the monetization uh, let's call it marketplace and and system uh, for for the industry when when you have uh, more more freedom uh, to uh, produce content and generate content generate elements for not only a game but a, a set of games even if they are not even developed by you but you have a certain uh, connection with uh, some other developer or you have a platform for the blockchain system and all the developers that are there can use the different and contents that are generated for that platform, I think that will be a huge market in the in the following years, and and uh, will will push the 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 content and and how the players uh, participate with the games and other players uh, a lot in in the future. Yeah, and just to quickly add on that, uh, just a short short remark. So, like, I think there's still going to be like premium and free to play games, but the reason trend that I've also been seeing is actually just the uh, mass market brands tapping into the audience of, of gamers. And we've been seeing like really cool games and experiences, although there these are just like the starting points, but being created like for Walmarts of the world, for Olaf or Chipotle. And this is also about money because these brands are tapping into the audience of gamers. They're paying for these experiences or games to be created. Uh, and this is also a huge opportunity, and we've seen like very successful companies, like specifically focusing on on this on this niche. So UGC gaming and integration with uh, with brands is 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 a trend as well. Hmm. I have to say. Uh... Quick, quick response to that. Uh, we, uh, as we develop uh, content for PC and consoles, uh, we've we've been also creating UEFN content for for different brands and different different uh, marketing uh, campaigns. So I, I can definitely see how that will become larger and more understandable by these these brands these players that are not used to the gaming industry they may have the idea of an online game that they can develop for a small thing or they could play with uh, like work with a, a big developer and include their content in a certain game but they are still not not completely in their mindset of creating a certain experience for Fortnite for these players that can then tell their friends. And then uh, we've, we've seen that with BMW not, not so long ago and uh, some some other big, big uh, companies doing this uh, worldwide and, and making a, a big impact in, in their communities and new communities that they didn't reach before. Totally. Thank you very much, David, for the input. And not only David, thank you very much, guys, to all of you for this really great uh, session today. It was really a pleasure. Looking at the time, we're a little bit over time, but uh, a big thanks goes out to also everybody in the audience listening to this panel here as well. Big kudos to all of you because it's Friday. It's depending on where in the world you are, it might be already night or nearly night. Yeah. So therefore, a uh, big kudos to all of you that you are here, that you're leveling up your game in understanding more about the gaming industry listening to the thoughts of those experts here with me in this session so therefore once again thank you very much to everybody here in this round and i wish you an amazing evening and an amazing uh weekend ahead thank you Thank, thank you. you. So thank much. you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you Bye. all. Also from my side, because I actually have to give the little final word. So again, thank you to everyone who's now exiting our panel there. But to everybody else who is still sticking around, there is indeed going to just be a little word from 
um, the Hit Games Conference people. So if you want to stick around and hear that just for a couple of minutes, please do. Otherwise, do consider checking out the uh, actual in-person events which are coming this year. I've mentioned them before, but we're going to have Istanbul in April. We've got Barcelona in June, Bangalore in September, Berlin in October, and also Abu Dhabi sometime in December. So if you've enjoyed this, um, it can only be better in person. Of course, we're all such digital people, but we do love the in-person interactions as well. Thank you all so much for listening today and maybe see you next time. Take good care. Ciao, ciao.